Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Look Back, where I take a look at reviews that I did one year, five years, ten years, and twenty years ago this week, and I tell you what I think about them now, if I think about them at all. So let's get started with last year. I took a look at Noble Run. Cool theme, the idea of, you know, it's a little deck building game. It's just not a very good game, unfortunately. I like the theme and the art, though. Uprising, this is a big giant game. Both this and Noble Run I gave a five to, though. It's, it has a mix of pandemic and zombies, and it's like a bunch of things. It's like a, they, they call it a 4X, you know, cooperative game. It just doesn't have enough there. It's this big game, but the luck and everything involved in it doesn't seem to justify how big it is. Tales from the Loop. I originally gave this one a six, but I dropped it to a five. Tales from the Loop, an interesting idea. I guess it's originally paintings. I know they made a TV show, which I found to be absolutely boring, but I don't care about that. Um, but the game itself, there's too many rules holes and it's just moving around and essentially rolling a bunch of checks. Space Base, The Mystery of Terra Proxima. This is the second expansion for Space Base. And while I love Space Base a lot, um, this one is a six for me because it has a lot of stuff in it that you're not going to use. It's a little bit fiddly for an expansion. Skull Canyon Ski Fest is about skiing and moving up and down. It's fine. It's nice. It feels like it needs a little bit more. Six out of ten. Darwinots, a placement game, which is, it works well. Another six. There's just not a lot beyond the placement of the tiles. Has a pretty cover, too, but it feels like the artwork is not in the game. Wild Serengeti, this is great artwork, cool pieces, all kinds of cool animals, but I'm just giving this one a six because it's, it's, it's interesting to play, but it's way longer than it should be, and there's a little bit of, uh, well, you just messed the board up, so now i got to rethink my turn. We also look, took a look at Careers last year. Um, careers is a game in which I uh, have a lot of nostalgia, and it's, it's good, but it is definitely a product of its time. I liked it the best of everyone at the Dice Tower. Hidden Leaders. This one I'm improving from a 6 to a 6.5. It's almost there. I like the idea of having different victory conditions, and you're not sure you know, who controls what in playing these cards. I like that concept a lot. has good artwork, good things, but it's just a little lighter than what I would normally play. Fire and Stone. This is a 7. This is from Claus Jorgen Raid, who made Carcassonne, a game as you're kind of expanding out. A light but very fun game. Decorum. This one's a seven, although I want to be clear, it's a seven with two players. With more than two players, it's trickier. As you are rearranging a house and just trying to match everyone's what they have, you have like a secret objective. And I think it's a nice back and forth two player. The four is much trickier. Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances. I gave this one a seven. It's a back and forth game. Even with all the expansions coming in, and we've played them all, you've seen us play this a lot on our channel. It's still good, it's still seven. It hasn't improved it that much to make it higher. I think it's good. It's light. There's a lot of different things in it, but it's basically run up and hit the other person. It's fun, especially if you like Disney. Return to Dark Tower Alliances. This is an expansion for Return to Dark Tower, which was already a great game. I didn't think it needed an expansion, but I like this one because it adds things to make it harder, but also things to make it easier, and I think that's fun. Five years ago, I reviewed Jurassic Park Danger. From Ravensburger, this is a one versus all type game. It's fine, but it you can tell it it's almost it, it just could have been a little smoother. Six out of ten. Moa. This is a weird theme here. The theme is about the colonization of New Zealand, but everyone is animals instead of human beings. From Martin Wallace, a six out of ten. Luxor. This game was nominated for the Spieler's Yars, and it's that's a pretty good following as you're basically moving around in a spiral towards the middle. It's fine. I just didn't find it to be particularly compelling. A 6 out of 10. Jungle Joust. A 6.5 from IDW about jousting and betting money on that. Almost feels like it's based on, you're riding rhinos, but it feels like it was based on the old video game. Bees! I think there's six bees. I don't know how many bees are in this. This is about speed rolling of dice, which normally doesn't rank that highly for me, but I thought this was a fun one. 7 out of 10. Laser Chess. This sounds so cool. In fact, this is a remake of a game called Ket. K-H-E-T. Laser Chess is a game in which you're moving pieces around that are mirrors, and you'll press a button, shoot your laser, you shoot your opponent's king, you win. Very fun. It's not as good as some deeper dexterity games, but I like it. 7 out of 10. 
Mutant Crops. This is a small little card game with weird theming, Mutant Crops. But it, it plays very nicely. A nice little card game, if you can find this one. 8 out of 10. And then Space Base, the base game five years ago. I originally gave this a 9, but it is a 10 now. Space Base is fantastic. A game that takes Catan and basically just makes it a bunch of ships in front of you. You roll dice, you get resources, but you're constantly upgrading your ships. And it's so much fun. Ten years ago, I reviewed Ladies and Gentlemen. It's a weird game where you have a partner in this game. One of you is a gentleman, one's the lady. The gentleman gets money so that he gives the lady stuff to buy clothes. It's all tongue-in-cheek. But taking the tongue-in-cheek out of it, I just didn't find it to be very fun. Five out of ten. Angry Birds Star Wars. <laughs> I believe I bought this at Walmart. Um, yeah, you set up a bunch of plastic pieces and flip bird pieces at them to knock them over. Meh, five out of ten. Ace Detective. This is a Richard Launius game, a storytelling game from 8th Summit. And it's good, but there's a lot of errors. 8th Summit made a lot of errors in their game, so it doesn't rise above six out of ten. Lady Alice. This is the name of a boat that you're on, and you're a bunch of Sherlock Holmes kids figuring that out. It's a deduction game. It's a nice, lighter deduction game, 6.5. Android Netrunner. So I debated on my rating for this one, because it's a seven, and it's still a seven. And I thought, should I drop it? Because I'm not, I don't know that I want to play it, but I liked it. It's a weird rating because Android Netrunner, it's an obtuse game to learn. It has obtuse terminology, um, difficult rules, very asymmetrical play, and it, it acts like a collectible card game even though it's a living card game. But when you do get into it, it's really good. So my rating's kind of in the middle there, 7 out of 10. Shadow Hunters. They just recently released this as Fangs, which I don't think anyone in the world has played. Shadowhunters is a nice little um, social deduction game that was out before there was a zillion of them that I thought was fun. 7 out of 10. City of Iron. 10 years ago, this is the game that really put Red Raven on the map for me. I'd already played their 8-Minute Empire, but City of Iron, a deck-building game. A lot of really cool things in this one. Check it out. 8 out of 10. And Forenzi. This is a tower-building game, a really good one, where you're putting tower pieces on cards, and when you'll draft the card from the line... You take the first one if you want to take, if you don't want to take the first one, you drop a tower and each one you skip. And these towers are useful because you're trying to build towers different colors. It's simple but very effective game. 8.5. 20 years ago, I reviewed Draco and Co. Now this one I've given a 7 to and I'm afraid to modify the number much because I don't remember all the rules of it. It's been 20 years. Uh, that you were trying to manipulate people to be next to Draco. It was from the blue box Descartes line. Um, but... I think I wouldn't like it as much now, but I'm just guessing. And then Moods, 7.5 here. This is a party game in which you roll a die, and there's like uh, 10 different uh, ways to say something. Angrily, happily, in love, and then you read a phrase, and everyone's guessing which way was the way you said it. Kind of a simple game. It might not last as long today, but we had a lot of fun playing Moods. So there you go, folks. Those are... Games that I reviewed 1, 5, 10, and 20 years ago. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Vassell. This is the Dice Tower. Bees!